After months of silence, there are growing concerns about the legitimacy of Spin Launch and its promise to provide environmentally friendly orbital delivery options. While the company aims to use a revolutionary new launch concept, recent reports state that the problems lie deeper than just mere technological hurdles. Over a year has passed since Spin Launch provided a significant update on their innovative launch prototype. Specifically, on September 27, 2022, Spin Launch achieved a milestone, their 10th suborbital test flight utilizing the suborbital accelerator. This test was a major success according to the company. What made it even more significant was the fact that it carried payloads from NASA and several other groups. Despite the notable success of their 10th suborbital test flight, it's been over a year since Spin Launch conducted any further suborbital tests, and updates from the company have been scarce. This raises the question of what Spin Launch has been working on during this period and when we can anticipate seeing the complete system in action. Based on reports from external sources, it appears that Spin Launch has been primarily focused on securing a suitable location for its orbital accelerator. This process has proven to be considerably more challenging than initially anticipated. While the suborbital variant serves well for testing purposes, if Spin Launch aims to truly test its system and venture into space, developing and implementing the orbital accelerator represents the pivotal next step in its journey. Spin Launch's approach deviates from conventional fuel-based rockets, opting instead for a ground-based, electric-powered kinetic launch system. This innovative method aims to significantly reduce the costs associated with space access. Within Spin Launch's framework, two crucial systems play a vital role, the suborbital accelerator and the orbital accelerator. The suborbital variant serves as a testing platform, operating at speeds ranging from 800 to 5,000 miles per hour. It acts as a proving ground for the orbital launch system. Around two years ago, in 2021, Spin Launch achieved a significant event. Their inaugural successful launch propelled a test vehicle at supersonic speeds and concluded with the recovery of the reusable flight vehicle. Throughout 2022, the system underwent regular test flights, featuring various vehicles and launch velocities. The 10th test flight, as mentioned, the most recent one, carried four partner payloads and two instrumentation payloads on the suborbital accelerator flight test vehicle. This flight not only marked a crucial step forward, but also provided essential data on the launch environment and payload integration process. Following the successful test flight, the CEO of Spin Launch, Jonathan Yaney, emphasized that the data and insights gathered from these flight tests would be invaluable. This information would not only aid Spin Launch in the further development of their orbital launch system, but would also be beneficial for their customers. These customers, relying on Spin Launch for affordable, frequent, and sustainable access to space would benefit from the knowledge acquired through these tests. Simultaneously, Spin Launch's financial endeavors were also thriving. During the same period, the company announced the closure of a significant $71 million Series B funding round. In an official statement, they revealed that these funds would be allocated towards advancing the development and commercialization of the world's first kinetic launch system and satellite product line. The ultimate goal was to provide space access that was not only cost-effective and frequent, but also environmentally responsible. In contrast to the numerous test flights conducted in the previous year, there hasn't been a single one in 2023. This absence of activity, coupled with an unusual silence on the company's social media platforms, led to widespread speculation, even raising concerns that the company might be a hoax. After almost a year of no significant updates from Spin Launch, it presents an intriguing contrast to companies like SpaceX, known for their quick development cycles and regular updates. Yet, it's important to recognize that in the space technology sector, phases of apparent inactivity, as evidenced by companies like Rocket Lab in their initial stages, are often a part of the innovation process. Breaking the silence, Spin Launch unexpectedly posted a video on its YouTube channel. Surprisingly, the video didn't focus on the suborbital or orbital accelerator. Instead, it delved into satellite systems. This shift indicated that Spin Launch might have achieved a level of satisfaction with its test results and is now concentrating on the creation of an actual orbital variant. Recent updates and reports from third-party sources also align with this notion. Recent reports have highlighted Spin Launch's exploration of potential launch sites outside the United States. Specifically, the company is conducting a feasibility study in Western Australia, evaluating two areas of land to determine their suitability for hosting Spin Launch's orbital accelerator. 
Spin Launch has been methodically considering global locations, assessing operational effectiveness, safety, compliance, environmental impact, and market accessibility. Although they have not disclosed specific details, they have confirmed the existence of several suitable locations in Australia. The Department of Planning, Lands, and Heritage acknowledged receiving Spin Launch's application for a two-year license to conduct feasibility studies on the land and is engaging in stakeholder consultations with local government, a step that aligns with Spin Launch's reported activities. In reality, Spin Launch has faced significant challenges in finding a suitable location for its orbital accelerator. The quest began in 2018 when the company initially considered Hawaii. Hawaii, with its proximity to the equator, offered strategic benefits for orbital launches. Spin Launch explored specific sites on the main island and other areas. However, their plans faced a major setback. Despite the advantageous location, the local community in Hawaii expressed strong opposition to Spin Launch's presence, vehemently rejecting the idea of an orbital accelerator being built anywhere near them. Consequently, Spin Launch had to abandon the project following a meeting with the uninterested local community. Selecting a launch location for satellites involves strategic considerations. Ideally, a company aims for a site as close to the equator as possible, or alternatively, as far south as feasible. Equatorial regions offer an advantage due to the Earth's rapid rotation, aiding in faster launches. In Spin Launch's case, Factors such as minimizing the impact of sonic booms and noise pollution also play a crucial role. Given these criteria, the company faces the challenge of identifying an optimal location for its first orbital accelerator. Considering all these factors, it's evident that Spin Launch is still in the process of finding a suitable site. The complexity of these considerations means that the company is far from the actual construction phase. Building cannot commence until a definitive launch location is secured. To grasp Spin Launch's concept thoroughly, examining the design and dimensions of their orbital accelerator provides valuable insight. At the core of this innovative technology lies a colossal vacuum chamber. This chamber, constructed from steel, boasts an impressive diameter of approximately 300 feet or 91 meters. Within this low-pressure environment, a tether is set into motion, spinning at an astonishing speed of nearly 5,000 miles per hour. This controlled environment minimizes aerodynamic heating and drag, ensuring efficient operation. Central to the system is the hypersonic tether, meticulously crafted from high-strength carbon fiber. This tether is accelerated to launch speeds by a sophisticated central electric drive. This drive comprises dual AC electric motors, channeling their power through a hydrodynamic radial bearing assembly. At the end of the tether, the launch vehicle, designed to ferry the payload through the Earth's atmosphere and into orbit, is securely attached. When the payload reaches the desired velocity, it is time for release. An automatic sequence is initiated, precisely detaching the launch vehicle through an exit tunnel with utmost precision. This leads us to the final vital component of the system, the exit tunnel. This tunnel is equipped with ultra-high-speed airlock doors, functioning faster than the blink of an eye. These doors play a crucial role, swiftly preventing the vacuum chamber from repressurizing after the launch vehicle has been successfully released. The innovative process devised by Spin Launch serves a crucial purpose, enabling the company to achieve frequent launches with minimal downtime. The ultimate goal is to maintain the vacuum chamber pressurized throughout the day, allowing launches to occur every couple of hours. When a payload is released, it swiftly ascends into the sky at tremendous speeds. Shortly after its protective shell is shed, a small rocket ignites, propelling the payload into its designated orbit. This approach is not just a technological advancement. It's a response to the growing urgency in the space industry. With plans to launch 10 times the current number of satellites in the next decade, Spin Launch recognizes the pressing need for environmentally sustainable space access technology. As more people venture into space, the demand for launching structures, equipment, and supplies to support in-space activities surges. The vision extends to a future where tens of thousands of individuals live and work in space, necessitating the launch of millions of tons of infrastructure and supplies. Spin Launch confidently asserts its capability to meet these demands. Their innovative methods represent a significant step toward making sustainable space access a reality, ensuring a future where space exploration can occur on a larger scale, while minimizing its environmental impact. However, the company's extended period of silence and struggles with securing a launch location 
has raised more questions about the legitimacy of their long-term idea. Only time will tell if Spin Launch has what it takes to become the next big player in an ever-expanding space industry. What do you think? Can Spin Launch provide a better alternative for sending payloads into orbit? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.